In this OBS Studio tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make your live streams look awesome, and we're starting right now. What is going on? My name is Nick, welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and you wanna learn how to grow your channel, make videos, and all types of other YouTube related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. You're gonna love this. I'm not gonna waste any time, let's go to the computer. Okay, so now that we're at the computer, I'm going to show you how to take a boring looking scene like this and make it into something like this where you can have chat on it, to where you can do like video transitions and things like that. Um, you can also do it to where you add tickers, to where you have like a, a little sidebar to where you're doing like a split screen and you can transfer everything back and forth super easy and it can be cool with the transitions as well. Of course, you wouldn't want to use transitions as heavy as I just did, but I'm just showing you the example of what it is that I'm going to be showing you. So the first thing that we need to do in order to get all of this stuff rolling is we need to go up to the scene selection or scene collection and select new and that's going to blank everything out as soon as i do this it's going to remove my webcam so i'm going to add that in as well and show you how to do that also so for this i'm just going to call this tb demo and as you can see it took away my webcam so i'm going to go ahead and add that by adding a capture device and i'm just going to call that webcam and that will get us taken care of there. Now, as you can see, when it first came on, it's really zoomed in and blown up. And on yours, if you see it and it comes in like this, all you have to do to fix that is you just change the resolution down here to custom, and then you change it to the actual frame size that you're gonna be going out at. In my case, it's 1920 by 1080. And then I hit okay. And then as you can see, it brings everything you know to the, to the normal uh, ratio. So once I have that in place, this is going to be my blank starting point. So once I have that in place, I'm gonna go down to my scenes down here in the bottom left-hand side of the screen, and I'm going to choose rename. And then for this one, I'm just going to change this to main plane. And then that tells me anytime I click on this, anytime I transition to this, no matter what, it's just going to be a plain thing that's happening, just me right here on the screen. So the next thing that I wanna do is I want to build onto this. So I'm gonna duplicate it here. I'm gonna right click on main plane and I'm gonna hit duplicate. And then I'm gonna do main with a ticker. And then what that gives me the ability to do is add additional sources over here. So I have one scene here that nothing else is gonna be on. And then this one here is going to be all of the ticker graphics to make the actual ticker that goes along the bottom of the screen. So here I'm gonna click plus, I'm gonna to go to image. I'm gonna do ticker BG for ticker background. And when I do that, it's gonna ask me where the file is. So here I'm gonna click on ticker BG, hit okay. And then there you can see this graphic that is now showing up at the bottom of my screen. Now, how this is going to work is it's going to be this graphic, and then I'm gonna have a layer of text. And then after that layer of text, then I'm gonna have a covering graphic as well. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna hit plus, and then I'm gonna add that covering graphic right now. So I'm going to do ticker top and I'm gonna grab this. Now, as you can see right here, when I pull this in, if you look at this little area right here, you can see it's transparent, okay? So basically what's happening here is this is going to allow the text to show up to appear behind this and then disappear into this side as well while keeping the TubeBuddy logo in there. So I'm gonna hit okay. Now with this, just so you know what's going on, is all of this stuff that I'm showing you right now, I actually built this for TubeBuddy for the stream that I do there. So if you wanna learn even more YouTube stuff, I'm gonna put a link to the TubeBuddy channel so you can definitely head over to them because me and other YouTube experts are over there you know, sharing information to help you grow your channels as well. So the next thing that we wanna do is I'm going to actually click on the little lock icon for all three of these. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm gonna have to move the text around once I get it in here. So if I have these locked, then I can click anywhere on the screen, move anything that I want, and nothing is going to be selected or moved. So it's just kind of like a fail safe. Click on plus, and then I'm gonna to go to text. And then here, I'm just gonna make sure that says text. And then here, I'm going to put in just anything for the sake of the demo. And then once I have what it is that I'm going to be saying in the text, you can see it right up here at the top. You can see it's kind of small, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into select font. And in this case, I'm actually going to find the font that I was using. This is a really cool thing about OBS is it lets you select different fonts. So you can make sure that, you know, things are matching up with your branding and all of that. So I'm gonna select a different font. I'm gonna hit okay. And then I'm gonna click okay on this as well. Once I have that in place, then I can grab the text and I can bring it down. Now, as you can see, it's really small right now. So on a mobile device, this would be pretty much impossible to read. So I'm gonna grab one of these corners and I'm just going to start moving it. And as you can see, that's gonna scale that text up and make it a little bit bigger and a little bit easier to read. From there, I'm going to just bring it down the screen. And then because I have this selected, I can just tap on the arrow buttons to kind of fine tune it as far as getting it into the right place that I want it to be. 
And then as you can see over here in the sources section, this is at the very top and it's covering up the TubeBuddy logo and it's just not very flattering right now. So in order to fix that, what I have to do is I have to take the text and I have to bump it down a notch. And then now I've got that nice looking fade going in and out. So my text comes in, fades back out, the logo's still there and everything still looks nice, neat and clean. So what I'm gonna do now is I need to make that text move. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go to filters. Here I'm going to click on the plus sign and then I'm gonna click on scroll. And then here, I wanna show you this real quick. Let me move this over to here. So when I move this horizontal speed, you can see the text is gonna to start to move. Now I can make it really fast to where, you know, people are reading it really fast and, and all that, or I can slow it down, make it something a little bit more reasonable. In this case, I'm gonna go with like a 31, that's fine. So it's still coming along, it's still moving along, um, but it's not so much that it's ridiculously distracting. So once I have that speed, I'm gonna hit close. And then as you can see, the ticker is gonna be flowing along there nicely during any time that I want that to show. So now we have two scenes. We have the main plane and then we have the main ticker, okay? So the next thing that we wanna do is we're going to duplicate that main plane again. And I'm gonna call this one chat, or sorry, cam with chat, okay? Now with this one, we're gonna do that same exact thing where I'm gonna to go to the plus, I'm gonna add an image here. And this is going to be I'm just gonna call this one background because there's not a lot that's gonna be happening in this scene. So I'm gonna find that and then I'm gonna bring it in. Now, as you can see right here, the area that I have right here, it's already taken away. So I saved this image here out of Photoshop as a transparent PNG. Okay, so basically I removed the background layer so that I could save it so I'd be able to see through this. Now, another option that I would have had was to make a, the same graphic, but actually put a square on the screen in this area and then grab my picture or my, my video image there and scale it down and, and try to fine tune it to make sure that everything is in the right place and the right size. But what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna lock this background so I'm not clicking on it. I'm gonna click on the webcam. And then now you can see when I move this, because I have that area transparent, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be perfect. I can just move it in, kind of scoot it into place, and then fine tune it a little bit with my arrow keys, and then there we go. I don't have to spend a ton of time sitting there trying to make everything uh, match up. And in addition to that, I also get a little bit of a drop shadow over here to kind of give it a little bit of an additional look, so to speak. Now, the next thing that we want to do is something that I get asked about a ton, and that is showing the chat on the screen because we have to put it in this little area over here so that viewers can see the live chat for this particular scene when we show this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring my live streaming page over. I'm going to show you how to do this. When you go to your live streaming page on YouTube, you click here and then you click on pop out chat. When you do that, they're going to give you a URL up here at the top. You want to copy that and then you can close it. And then after you close that, you can actually just move that right out of the way and or close the, the window or whatever. And it's okay because you have that URL. That's all that you need. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go down to plus in my scenes or in my sources, actually, I'm going to go down to plus. I'm going to choose browser source here. I'm going to make this chat as the identifier. And then you can see here, there's already a URL here going to o, uh, OBS project, but I'm going to override that with my YouTube chat. Okay that URL that I just got. Now, because I've already built this for you know the thing that I'm doing with TubeBuddy, so I've already built this, um, I already know that the width of this is gonna be way too big. So I'm gonna take the width of this down to 520, and I'm gonna take the height to, let's say, eh, let's do 890, okay? From there, I'm gonna hit okay, and then you'll see the chat is now popping up on the screen. I just grab that, and I bring it over here and get it into place, okay? I could leave it like this, and it would be it would be perfectly okay. I mean, if it just looks like this and you have the white on there, it's fine. But if you look at this from a design standpoint, I have all of this, these dark elements. I'm wanting people to focus on the TubeBuddy logo down there, which by the way, if you don't have TubeBuddy installed yet, I've got a link to that in the description. But I want, I want to draw people's attention to the TubeBuddy logo and I want them looking at my screen. I want them looking at the chat as well, but I don't want them to be overwhelmed and distracted by what's going on in the chat. So what I have to do for that is I have to put in a CSS code, which I have in a notepad here, and I'll actually put this as a resource link down in the description below. But I have a um, some CSS code that I'm going to drop into this chat option right here. So I'm gonna click right click on chat, and I'm gonna hit properties, and I'm going to delete this in the CSS area right here, and then I'm going to paste in 
all of this code right here. And again, I'm gonna have a resource link to this down in the description. So you'll be able to uh, get this same exact code down in that description if you want this. And then I'm gonna hit okay. And then you'll see that it made my text bigger and it also took away that background. So now it's not as distracting. It's still distracting, especially when it's all moving around, but it's not as distracting. So what we've done there is now we have this chat area so that so that people that are watching can see their chat come up on the screen right so i'm just going to click on something there and then that fills that box out and you can see right there as you can see you know can you see this that i put down there um it completely fills that box out and makes everything look nice and clear now to be picky i would want to scoot this down here just a tad because that's a little bit too tight up there at the top for me so I would bring it down to something like that, maybe bring up the bottom a little bit, but you can fine tune yours um, when you're making uh, your graphics for your live stream. So now we have three chats. Now we have three um, scenes, I mean, in here. We have the main plane, we have the main ticker, and then we also have this, which is our cam with chat. So we're starting to create, you know, a nice production here, right? Like this is looking really professional. It's looking great. Um, everything is nice and organized, you know, real easy to follow what's going on. And a really awesome thing about this is down here in the sources part, you don't have just a humongous pile of stuff down there, right? You can just switch it as you need it instead of having a bunch of things that you have to sort through in order to make these same things happen. And you don't have to drag things around all the time and resize the frame and all of that. So this makes it so much easier. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy the main plane again. And this one is going to be split screen. Now this comes in really cool if you are a gamer or if you are a business owner and you want to have your screen and then you also want to have something happening on the side over here to where you can have like your social media information or you can have um, like a product that you're talking about. Or you can have bullet points of what it is that you're talking about while keeping yourself on the screen. This part is really cool. So what I'm going to do here is I created that split screen scene. And as you can see in the sources here, the only thing again that we're starting with is just the webcam by itself. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and I'm going to grab the image that I made. And then with this, you can see I'm kind of, you know, covered up there or whatever, but the graphic over here is where you would put, there we go, is where you would put the, um, you know, any additional information that you have. But what you would do in this case with the webcam is I'm going to lock that. And then with the webcam, I can just take this, drag it over just like this. And then there we go. I'm nice and centered. So let's say that I'm talking here in the main plane and then I want to say something about, you know, whatever it is that I'm talking about. Then I would click on this and you can set this up. You can set up a bunch of these so you can just rotate through them as you're talking about things or when you want to, you can go to the cam chat and things like that. So now that we have this in place, I want to level this whole thing up to really make it pro. I'm sure you've seen the news where, you know, they're talking about something and then they transition into something else and then they have like a logo or some type of graphic that comes up on the screen to actually make that transition to happen and make it kind of smooth and pro looking. Well, that's what we're gonna do. So what we're gonna do for that is I'm going to click on studio mode over here and that's gonna split the screen. So if you're not familiar with OBS right now, um, if you're not familiar with OBS yet, basically how this works, is over on this side of the screen, the one that has a ticker on it right now, this side of the screen is basically a staging area. And then the other side of the screen where we have the split screen, that is actually what would be live that your viewers would be seeing right now. So if you're recording something in OBS or if you're actually streaming in OBS, the one over on the right where the where the split screen is right now, that is your actual live area. That's what's actually being streamed or recorded. And over on your left, that is your staging area where you actually build everything and you get it ready to go over. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add that transition so that we can really make this look cool. So here I'm going to go over the scene transitions and I'm gonna hit plus and then I'm gonna select Stinger. Now here I'm going to do icon transition I'm going to hit OK. Then it's going to give me the option to go find it. And I'm going to go find it. It's called the TB icon transition. TB stands for tube buddy. And then for these other options, I'm going to leave these on the default. But if you are wanting to hear the transition, if you have audio in yours, like I do with mine, and you're wanting to actually hear that transition, what you would do is you would just click on this and then you would go down to monitor only with mute output. Okay. And then as you're playing it, if you're, if you're doing your stream, you have headphones in and you want to, you know, be a part of the show in terms of listening to what's going on, then that gives you the ability to do it. So I'm going to hit okay. Now 
This is where this gets cool. I'm going to go up here to the quick transition. I'm going to hit the plus sign and I'm going to hit icon transition. And then now that icon transitions in there. So how this works, let's say that I want to transition from this split screen over here to the ticker version that's over here. Then I can click on this icon transition and then it does that for me while still keeping everything looking cool for the viewers. So basically, instead of making it a hard cut like this, every time that I do the transition or a fade, then I can hit that icon transition and actually take it to a different segment. So that's really cool um, where you can say, okay, well, I wanna use this to transition me in between segments. You can set up different graphics that you change, you know, for each thing in between each different segment that you're trying to produce. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this up another notch and we're gonna add another option here to slide. And I'm just gonna call this one down. You can do up, down, left, or right. And then here, I'm just gonna make this down. And you can also add these up here as well to the quick transitions. Any quick transitions that you want, you could add them up here. This is especially handy for graphics. But now, if I wanna transition in between something, I can just hit down like that, and then it will take me you know, into anything it is that I'm wanting it to take me into. But if you really wanna do this in like a really cool way what you can do is i'm going to go into my settings here i'm going to show you something under the general tab if i scroll down you're going to see this option right here for studio mode transition to scene when double clicked okay i have that selected and i'm going to show you why the reason that's selected is because let's say that i do a down transition okay if i double click these now it's going to automatically just send it over and it's going to send it over with that down transition. Same thing would happen if you wanted to do a fade, right? You see how it just fades it all around. And the same thing happens if I want to do the icon transition. So let's say that I'm sitting here and I'm talking about something for a while and then I want to take it back to the plane. Then I can click on that and then it'll take me back to the plane and then I'm, I'm ready to go in terms of making everything look awesome. So the same thing applies if I want to go to the split screen, then I click on that and then it makes that really cool transition to really pro everything up quite a bit. Now, in addition to that, if you really want to make this stuff even cooler and make it easier for yourself, um, there's something called the Elgato Stream Deck. I'll put a link to it down in the description. And it's basically a live switcher. It's it's really low cost. And we actually use it in our studio that I do my Nimmin live show on every Saturday. Um, and I actually have one right here at home as well. And basically how that works is you can program the buttons and you can assign anything it is that you want to happen, you can assign it to these buttons and you can just press the buttons without having to actually click anything inside of OBS itself. If you want to learn more about growing your channel, making videos and all types of other YouTube related stuff, start now by hitting the round subscribe icon so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.